Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV, where we are back in Razatan to continue our main story quest. After last time, Gestoller asked to investigate the, the Void Gate in the Bounty. And yeah, let's see how we continue here. Thank you for putting forth Kazar's name. Those whose lives he enriched will take comfort in seeing his legacy honored. You forgive me for not speaking sooner, but I bear a message from Arkon Yestola. She asked that you meet her at the High Crucible at your earliest convenience. Understood. Thank you. Yestola must have finished her study of a void gate. Shall we hear what she has to say then? I will go with you. I thought the Satop would be too busy setting up a foundation. My clerks have been the well-oiled cocks of this administration since before I once assumed his office. They understand what needs to be done. And I'm curious to learn what conclusions your Archon has reached concerning the gate's unique construction. As you wish. Allow me to lead the way, Your Excellency. Perhaps curious if there is a way to save a sister after all. Shall we hear what your scholarly comrade has to say? For one who claims it is too late to save a sister, Vitra seems awfully interested in whatever revelations Ishtola might have to share. Right, here we all are. You discovered something new. I took a closer look at that device. I was able to determine how it keeps the void gate sealed, but not how it might instead be employed to expand the opening. For that, I would need to reference the technique developed by Vritra's alchemists, no records of which appear to have survived the intervening years. We know this, so why have you sent for us? Have you learned aught of value or not? Patience, good sir. One must introduce the subject before launching into specifics. From what we understand, travel between worlds is accomplished by passing through the nebulous rift which exists between them. Picture, if you will, the moment you were called to the first. You touched a focus of some kind to help the Exarch pinpoint your location. His summoning spell then channeled the energies of the Crystal Tower to begin your journey to his world. The magics tore a hole in the wall separating source and shard and cast you into the intervening nothingness. In that place, the laws of nature hold no sway. Yet even through this realm of temporal and spatial instability, you were born safely to your destination in the first. The feet that guided you across such an unimaginable distance, both physical and metaphorical, was nothing short of a miracle. Then what of the many voids sent found in the source? Who guides them here and how? An excellent question. Though there are several methods by which the Void's denizens might intrude upon our world, the rituals of summoning 
are the most typical. For example, let us consider the gargoyle, a creature of middling power. To call upon such an entity, the prospective summoner must force open a void gate. The portal lasts but a moment and is relatively small, allowing only an imp or other lesser being to squeeze through with their physical body intact. Our more powerful gargoyle, however, is too large for that. Creating a gate big enough for him would require vast amounts of energy, far beyond the reserves of any one mortal practitioner. Instead, tis far more common to bring over only the entity's soul we had a taste of that ourselves when a certain exarch dragged us to the first. Okay. And just as our bodies remained in our world, the Void Sense physical form is left behind in the 13th. Once at its destination, the summoned soul is granted a temporary shell to inhabit. In the gargoyle's case, a stone effigy has proven a suitable vessel. Wait. You said that Voidsent must be called here deliberately by someone in the source, reeled in like a fisherman with his catch. Exactly. For a being to navigate the chaos of the rift, with or without form, there must needs be a guiding agent on the other side. When the hordes poured forth from Alag's Great Gate, it was the technologists who drew them through. Though, to my knowledge, planar fissures are, in essence, natural passages between our world and the Void, which require no such guidance to traverse. Okay, that's interesting. Why is only the boundary between the Source and the Thirteenth so fragile? So much so that it often tears open of its own accord. I believe solving that mystery is key to understanding travel between the Source and its reflections. And how do you intend to get your answers? No. The danger is too great. Perhaps. But what some call danger, others think of as adventure. <laughs> Let me do. Were you not listening to my tale? Never mind that the means to expand the gate has been lost to the ages. Even could you force the portal wide enough, you would be greeted by an army of murderous horrors the very instant you step through. I assure you I was most attentive, and I agree that to go alone would be certain death. But if I were to bring along one who has already braved the Thirteenth and humbled the Cloud of Darkness, well, I imagine my chances would be much improved.
so much for taking it easy. Since when were you one for the quiet life? Once again, I put my life in your ever-reliable hands. That said, as much as I would like to march straight back to the Void Gate, there is the small matter of being unable to open it without the Sartrap's personal authority. As I've said before, I will grant you and yours any boon you choose to name, provided it does not endanger my people. You have my word that we will take every precaution. Not a single Void Scent will be allowed to threaten Razatan, assuming we manage to expand the portal in the first place. You have a plan. Actually, I had hoped you might help us with that. I presume the alchemists you retained supplied you with some explanation of their methodology. That they did. House Daimir was overseeing the project. Daimir, Daimir. Ah, yes. The family associated with the great work. I did not fully comprehend the theory, but their research began with a void scent which had slipped through the fissure. After a thorough examination, they created an arcane simulacrum possessed of similar qualities. A man-made void scent, if you will. It was apparently indispensable in their efforts to enlarge the gate. A man-made void scent? Yes. Being great admirers of the Archons, House Daimir submitted detailed notes to Charlene's official committee. They expected praise and accolades for their simulacrum, and were thus devastated to be informed that their work had been classified as prohibited material. If that's true, then those notes might still be stored in a forbidden archive somewhere. Not Google, of course, since that library had yet to be built. Which leaves us with... Numenon. With grass, favorite place to sneak around. Indeed, Numenon's restricted stacks may very well hold a copy. In which case, I say we head directly to Charlian. Unless you anticipate needing help to reach the high shelves, I see myself being of little use. Go on ahead. I still need to find Mirad and tell him about the Kalzal Foundation. Hmm. Let us be on our way as well. Yeah. They are resolved to venture into the void. Do I sit idly by? Good. Yestola. In order to enter Nomenon's restricted archives with a minimum of us, they must secure the permission of a forum. First of all, we shall need to enlist the cooperation of a member to broach the matter on our behalf. Who do you think might be inclined to assist us? No one springs to mind? What of Skolak Montashen? He did come to grass defense during the inquiry, after all. That could work out. 
It is settled. Let us head to Phenomenon and see if he's willing to help us once more. Your Stoller is now accompanying you. I apprenticed to Master Matoya at the age of seven and labored under her tutelage for a full decade. Never had the chance to attend the studium. Neither did Fanquid, as I recall. Soon after Master Lewis turned him in off the streets, he was put in the care of another Archon. His was a rigorous and practical education in the arts of espionage and survival. I sometimes wonder what my life might have been like had I pursued studies here instead. Should I wonder as well? Oh, never mind me. It was just an idle thought. Here's the last then after a day of lectures. <laughs> that does sound lovely. Afternoons with friends spent sipping tea and debating theories. So I would give up my time with Master Matoya for the world. The ten caves I studied in was about as far from the bright airy halls of academia as one could get, but it was a wondrous magical childhood nonetheless. Okay, and we are hopeful Skolak Montesen helps. Knock. Ah, visitors, and quite esteemed ones at that. What may I do for you? I pray forgive the intrusion, Skolak, but we are hoping you might help us secure permission to enter Numenon's restricted archives. Oh ho, no thought of for ways to the stacks this time, eh? I applaud the newfound sense of propriety, yet in all this wide world of comparative serenity, what so compels you to stop a vault of forbidden wisdom? Fascinating. I had no idea such a technique existed. I would have been surprised if you had. If my assumption is correct, the research left behind by Old Demir has lain dormant in Charlie and his archives for many centuries. And if you are not of the research, what then? Surely you don't intend to cross over into the void. That is, in fact, precisely what we intend. To what end, pray tell? To develop a method of traversing the rift for one that I might keep my word to a distant friend. Sentiment aside, I have journeyed to the enters of existence. I have thought, felt, and thought endlessly about the truth of our world and the nature of its future. And yet I want to understand everything, to unravel it all down to its very last secret. What scholar worthy of a name wouldn't force open a void gate or two if a grand revelation was what promised the world? <laughs> Marvelous. An audacious proposal worthy of Master Matoya herself. And after hearing the whys and wherefores, I for one do not believe you would use the knowledge for ill. I see no reason not to present your request to, for the form's consideration. Although, your petition would be better received if you also had the support of another well-placed acquaintance. Ooh. Why must the fortune of course? He can hardly ignore an honest request from his dear children's most treasured comrades. I was hesitant to approach him directly, but there's no denying that having Master Fortune on our side would tip the balance in our favor. Very well, we will pay a visit to the Levier estate and plead our case. 
Ah, one last thing before you go. I would consider it a personal favor if you might share with me the discoveries you make in the void. My appetite for knowledge is every bit as insatiable as yours, I'd wager. So if you could see your way to indulging an old man's curiosity. Of course, Skolak. You'll be sure to pass on any revelations. The form can be a cantankerous beast. One needs a person's voice to get it to move in the desired direction. And that's why we turn to Master Fortuno. Because despite everything, he is a persuasive voice. Monterchain seemed optimistic, but I doubt convincing Fortuno to champion our cause will be as simple as showing up at his doorstep. Hello, inappropriate name. Ah, Mr. Zwezzy, Mr. C. Stoller. How may I be of service? We've come to speak with Master Fortuno. Is he home by any chance? Yes, the Master is in residence. I shall inform him that he has guests. Well, well. A million would invite you inside for tea, but I assume this is not a social visit. We have some matters of import to discuss. Then pray proceed, you have my full attention. Well, I suppose I should praise you for following the proper protocols this time around. Skolak Montesian expressed much of the same sentiment. I assure you, we not attempt to circumvent the forum authority again. Unless it's absolutely necessary, of course. Of course. You do understand that restricted archives are restricted for good reason, yes? If no pressing need exists, then why risk the consequences of employing this forbidden knowledge? For a brother who misses his sister. She was his guardian and his friend. A selfless hero who crossed the rift between worlds to save her homeland from horror and suffering. But the brother has given up on thoughts of reunion. He spends his efforts elsewhere watching over the people, yet healing from the flames of her final days. Loyal to his duty, but betraying the longing in his heart. It is no vital mission, perhaps, uniting these siblings, but it feels a worthy cause to pursue, all the same. As one who feared losing his own loved ones and spent years in research to prevent it, surely you appreciate how painful such a separation must be. Reflection is still very much a mystery to us. Offering to share your experience in the forest should constitute a fair exchange for our cooperation. Do not celebrate just yet. The foe must still be convinced. I will add your request to the list of today's deliberations and deliver the decision to you at the Baldessian Annex. Please do come again. We are always glad to receive such close companions of the twins. The matter is out of our hands. All that remains is to return to the Annex and await word of a firm's decision.
Gut, wenn... So, what did you fall on the side? To put it bluntly, Master Matoya has burned some bridges here in Charlien, and sorted the earth for good measure. Then it became clear that her student was a petitioner in question. Well, no few members voiced their discontent. Then the chamber was reminded, in no uncertain terms, I might add, of the incredible debt we owe to you and your companions. That served to silence the grumbles and stiffen a few spines. And it was agreed that allowing you entry to the archives was the least you could do in return. That's wonderful news. Thank you both for speaking on our behalf. Yes, well, as I'm sure you are aware, this permission was not extended lightly. Forbidden knowledge is to be treated with the utmost caution, and there will be repercussions if it's not. I wish you well in your endeavor, and bid you good day. Ever the same, bad one. Uncompromising? Aye. But that very stoicism is exactly what Charlie needed to guide it through not one, but two exoduses. If I were but five years younger, I'd cast aside my lectern and join you on your adventures in a heartbeat. That went rather well, I think. As a child, I dreamt of any number of schemes for getting my hands on those forbidden tomes. Now I can simply walk in through the door. Our focus will be on finding how damn your research notes, of course, but the thought of so much knowledge at our disposal has me feeling a little giddy. Restricted reading. You'll be heading directly to the archives from here, I presume? You presume correctly. Then you'll want to speak with the index page when you arrive. It's been instructed to grant you access to the restricted section. Excellent. So once again, we thank you for all your help. Oh, it was my pleasure, believe me. May you find the knowledge you seek. Shall we? Gestolo is accompanying us once again. To think me a set of instructions I laughingly imagine may actually exist, but yams away from where you found me napping. If I had known of Al Zadar the Third's exploits sooner, I could well have saved myself days of research. Even a children's book might have pointed me in the right direction. To achieve the impossible, one must need to be flexible of mind and look beyond conventional wisdom. A lesson I had already learned, but clearly not taken to heart. Index page. Arconia Stola and guest identified. Do you wish to proceed into the restricted archives? Follow me if you would. Watch your step and please note that the use of naked flames is discouraged. If House Damia's notes are to be found anywhere, it will be here. Let us begin. Ah. 
Navi's pillars? Is that a viable construction or is this nonsense? Because this actually looks like it's something that could easily collapse. Untitled journal. Today, in a world not my own, I met the most beautiful void-born creature. She was so unlike her ravenous brethren. Eyes blazing, not with hunger, but trembling, like a candle's flame, threatening to flicker out at any moment. Untitled jo Goldsmith's Journal. I wonder if she is even a proper word. Such distinctions seem in in inconsequential, insignificant even. All that matters is the love I feel for this exquisite, transcendent being. Oh, we are tempted to read more, this does not seem the volume you are seeking. So many books I've yet to read. Yes, yes, we're here for one specific volume. You needn't remind me. <laughs> the following pages detail an advanced method for manipulating rift-spanning apertures as devised by Nuhashan, the ninth patriarch of House Damia. This looks right. We present these research notes to the faculty of Charlian Studium as both a token of our friendship and an expression of our boundless admiration. You appear to have located a forbidden volume you seek. Ishtola will need to make a final confirmation. And we can no longer watch the other ones. Sh shame! I have something you'd like to show me, do you? My apologies, I flipped open but a single book and was completely absorbed by the contents. Well done, Desiree. I think you may have found our prize. Yes, the Ether signature is unmistakable. I've felt the traces of House Damia's resonance many times at the great work. Time to see what all the fuss was about. Among the ranks of the Void Sent, there exist entities with the power to call forth their brethren from beyond. The species known as Atomos, however, is uniquely prodigious in this regard. From its distended maw, it can expel an endless procession of void-born creatures, a talent which sorely tested the Radiant Host in its battles against these abominations. Surmising that the entity itself was acting as a void gate, we endeavored to capture a small specimen and subsequently examine its physiological structure. Our findings revealed that the Atomos had absorbed a planar fissure into its own flesh, which it could expand at will into a functioning gate. Upon further analysis, we identified an ethereal wave pattern emitted during this process. A pattern we were able to emulate by passing crystal stored ether through a specially designed prism. We proceeded to embed said prism into an arcane simulacrum, thus completing what we have dubbed our 
artificial atoms. How could I have been so blind to the possibilities? This species, not to mention its ability to summon void scent, has been discussed among academics for years now. Just before the advent of the seventh umbral calamity, we received reports of Atomos sightings from every corner of Eorzea. Surely you've at least heard the tales. I have, apparently. And still, House Damir went and built a mock Atomos of their very own. I'm not surprised the Archons consigned their work to a restricted archive. It was no easy task. But at last, we've unearthed the volume we've been searching for. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't tempted to stay longer. See what other forbidden titles might be lurking on these shelves? Ah, but that would be abusing the very special privilege we've been granted now, wouldn't it? Better not. Being nice, staying in everyone's good, good graces. Yo, he has been added. <laughs> Congratulations on locating the object of your search. Please move along. As much as I would love to start crafting the Atomos, I'm afraid this is far outside my field of expertise. Fortunately, we know a Hunnish alchemist who would be delighted to involve herself in our house Demir project. Our business here is concluded for the moment. Please pass on our regards to the forum. Your message will be conveyed. Should you wish to indulge in more forbidden literature, I will be here. Patron mode disabled. Security mode engaged. If anyone can help us, Nidana can. I say we return to Fafnir and look for her at the great work. Okay. There she is. All these sallow, sleep deprived faces and their eyes still burn with fiery zeal. Some things never change. Ishtola tells me you're pursuing a most fascinating study, that you want me to be a part of it. That we do. I have no doubt you'd be interested. This research log should speak for itself. Will it now? By the sisters with a mark of horse Demir, we never even knew such a work existed. If you should, it was sequestered in Numenon's restricted archives after all. It was, but that means every work within is forbidden knowledge. A forbidden tome filled with forbidden research, and you put it right into my unsuspecting hands? I can hardly wait to read it. <laughs> to think that the Daimyr were developing such marvelous techniques so long ago. How many innovations have been lost over the centuries, I wonder? Now that you've glanced over the notes, what say you to helping us build a new mock Atomos? I say yes! A thousand times yes! Work on a Damier project that had even the redoubtable scholars of Charlian trembling in their sandals? No alchemist of a great work could resist! You're a woman after my own art. I was supposed I should ask, what do you mean to do with this big mouthed simulacrum once we've built it? So there's a secret void gate and sit in the ruins at the bottom of a bounty. Today is a day of revelations indeed. If the purpose of our man made Atomos is to expand this hidden portal, then I will need to see it for myself, I think. Manipulating rift spanning apertures 
is not the sort of thing you want to attempt without first taking into account every single factor. I mean, by all means, a company has to evolve. I plan to lead us back there shortly, once we finish gathering the components I require. Components? Charlian's markets provided the raw aquamarine and pure water crystals, but I might need help obtaining a small quantity of astrally infused water. For such a liquid, you need to go no further than the font of Maya. The ascetics of old once favored to place for their meditations, and the water which pools there now is known to enliven the flow of ether. That sounds perfect. If you'd be so kind as to fill a flask at the pool, I will petition Vitra to join us. The idea I have in mind won't amount to much without his authority to command the Void Gate. Shall we be about it then? We meet back here, Non. There's no greater joy than having a new puzzle to ponder. Good, but the episode is getting long. I think I end it here and we continue this next time. And then I'm Mace and don't get lost.